um, welcome back. Um, so before the break, we were just getting together the, the crew, um, what draws them together, what drives them as a group, and what assets do they have. Um, now we're going to talk about how your crew in Liminal is related to several of the factions that are in play. So our setting at the moment is going to be the city of Edinburgh itself. It's the, the, the date and time of play is present day. In fact, we're going to take it back a couple of weeks till about the 27th of April. So three or four days before um, May Day and the eve of Beltana on the 30th of April. I'm going to say Beltana because a friend has recently pointed out to me that uh, Beltane is great, but Beltana is in the Gaelic is how best to say it. So I'm going to try and say Beltana. Um, it is, however, pronounced yes, Gaelic, so, not Gaelic. Well, to fair, he's, he's Irish, so he was not speaking uh, Gaelic, he's speaking yeah. Gaelic. Um, Touche. So, there are several factions uh, in Liminal, and some of them actually have already started to be sort of mentioned in your backstories, although you may not have realised it. So I'm going to go around and talk a bit about those factions, and I'm going to ask each of you um, to choose one faction that you feel positively about and one faction that you feel negatively about your character and if several of you hit on that uh, you might ha all have positive uh, links to one in one group in particular and all and several of you might have the same animosity towards one of the things and that will set the tone for um, for how we proceed in this world so speaking of fey courts um, and particularly for the Fae of Edinburgh. There are two main courts. There is summer and winter. And they are soon to change their thrones. So the court of Oak of Summer is soon to take over from the um, court of Holly and Winter. So they are Fae that have their domain with the city of Edinburgh and the wider lands of Scotland and even further south into the borders of England. Um, their domains will move around, but they are respectively the courts of the seasons of summer and the seasons of winter. Some are seely, so friendly, um, kind spirits, and some are unseely, meaning malicious, or in sometimes evil and uh, wanting to kind of trick or taunt mortals. But in general, they represent seasonal change. Um, you know of late, with the world of the humans changing as it does with seasons, that there is unrest between the seasons, that the changeover or the handover uh, is not going as the often these days and when the throne is 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 taken uh, again um, at this Beltane or Beltana things are looking a little bit troubled so there's those two courts there is also um, the soldality of the crown now with the going back to the ancient Roman times there are covens of vampires that have worked their way into the hierarchies usually the upper echelons of society within the Sceptred Isles, and they have um, aligned themselves through blood, through pacts uh, with other vampire covens to create the soldality of the crown. And they are an interweaving, intermeshed series of vampires who seek to control society um, and those that they seek to prey on within society. Um, they, as I say, usually in upper echelons, um, but they are have small small groups and covens around um, in many cities, and Edinburgh itself has um, a series of nests of vampires who are part of the soldality of the crown. There's also the Mer Mercurial Collegium, and one of two of you may have run across them, or in fact, possibly uh, no members. And the Mercurial Collegium are a cohort of criminal organisations that know of and rely on the super worlds of the supernatural, both the Fae and sometimes the ghostly realms. And they, pr tra they traffic in things magical, uh, in, in artifacts, in people, in spells. And they are often set against um, um, the Order of Merlin, who I think to sort of keep, um, uh, to be well, uh, well um, delivered and received magicians. They're the very orderly magicians, but the Mercurial Collegium are usually renegade or rogue wizards or criminals who traffic in, in magic. Um, there is the Order of St. Bede. Um, now, the Order of St. Bede is an ancient order. It serves both Catholic and Protestant branches of Christianity, and they see magic as a sin. They also seek to, to, to quash any knowledge of it, both because it would be a sin to know of it, but also they don't want the general populace to know. So they are very good at fusifying things, at disseminating knowledge that is false, um, 
which they see balances out they're they're protecting the general populace from the kind of co co caustic um, spiritual practices of magic they in their black habits of the ancient monks habits and, and nuns habits are why we often associate for figures who turn up in black at your door to to confuse you or to render your understanding of the world a little bit more um uh uh, opaque so they are often the people who will spew conspiracy theories on the internet or cover up things the order of saint Bede work to stop the general public knowing what is going on theirs is a sacred mission um and the other one is p division which is a fairly mundane name for vision of the police who are often tasked with paranormal activities it's well known in many of the um you know saint Le leonard's police um precinct in edinburgh and across the country of Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, that strange things happen. And sometimes you get a call out in the middle of the night. It might be to a croft or a thorpe. It might be to Edinburgh City Centre. And things are a bit odd. Things happen. And not often the regular sort of police on the beat will be sort of taken off that case and it will be shunted to P Division. And they, are, they investigate and try and discover what is going on and also try and hold peace up by finding out ahead of time what might be brewing. Um, and they know some things, they don't know all, but they certainly are aware of and investigate supernatural. So that's a brief overview of some of the factions. There are others, there are werewolf families, there are, as I said, mentioned the Order of Merlin, but for our, our city of Edinburgh and for tonight, uh, your crew, these are their sort of, sort of five or six different factions that you'll have come across. Um, so I'm going to go around and just ask each of you to say if there's a one where you have a positive feeling for and one where you have a negative feeling for. Um, and again, I might start with Anne, if you can recall, hopefully you can recall those. Um, I can go over them again for you if you want, um, but I'll, I'll list them off very briefly, which is the, the Court of Summer or, or Oak, the Court of Winter or Holly Court. There is P Division. There's the Soldality of the Crown, which is the Vampire Covens. There's the Mercurial Collegium, which are the sort of renegade and rogues criminal network. And there is the Order of St. Bede, who seek to quash knowledge of magic. Is any of those that you have a positive connection with? Oh, you're still on mute, by the way, Anne. Because I kept bashing my uh, microphone. Uh, is Edinburgh's uh, best specialist purveyor of uh, literature? Obviously, a lot of them have been in my shop. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily check where the money comes from. Um, I don't think I've had much to do with the courts. I think they are possibly have their own specialists that they call upon. Um, I've certainly had dealings with the what are they called the mercurial. The mercurial collegium. Uh, we've definitely had a cups of tea. Um, I, I, all knowledge is is important and should not be suppressed. So, so me and the beads don't go on. Okay, so you're gonna a, a negative a negative relationship with beads Definitely. and say a positive relationship with the Mercurial Collegium. Perhaps they. I, yeah. yeah, I think we get yeah. on. Um, okay. And you know the vampires pop in to get their nighttime reads, so you know, I've got a great erotic affection. So oh, so which one of those would you prefer to have a positive relationship with? It doesn't necessarily mean that they are as positive towards you, but you feel like I, I think the Mercurials and I we, we we understand the value of a good book. Okay. So a positive for the Mercurial College Collegium and a negative to the Order of Saint Bede. Okay, uh Lou, who do you feel positively disposed to? So I think Lilith has a kind of a bit of a hero worshipping thing going on with the Order of Merlin because she really wants to go legit and sort of become a respected magician, you know, looked up to and admired. She kind of she doesn't really like being this conjurer of cheap tricks. Um, I'm not sure it's mutual, though. I'm pretty sure the Order of Merlin don't know she exists, but a, a positive. Yeah, a, a positive aspiration towards the yeah. or the the order of merlin very nice um and who who would have a negative uh, she really doesn't like the order of St. Bede because they're a huge barrier to uh to magicians getting the respect that they deserve 
I think maybe she's even had some minor run-ins with like low-ranking members in the past. You know, people trying to discredit her and say that she's a fraud. She's not a fraud. <laughs> that really, really grinds her gears. Oh, very nice. I can feel some definitely, yeah, some passionate rage towards the uh, the Order of Saint Bede and their meddling in, uh, in yeah, in your life of all things. So, oh, okay. So, positives towards the Order of Merlin and uh, a negative uh, to another negative to the Order of Saint Bede. Fantastic. Uh, let's go down to Cam. What, po- what, what positive yeah. relationship? Um, so, I think I think similarly with the, with negative. I think I think <laughs> yeah. it might have been the Order of Saint Bede that actually uh, cost me my position. I, I think yeah. that the, the men in the, the you know, in black robes sort of turned up one day, and the next thing I knew, I was. Uh, yeah, out on my behind, and uh, the doors of academia were closed to me. Um, I think that um, during that process, though, I think that I uh, a couple of people who were sympathetic to me still in the university sort of slipped me a number um, for the the P division, um, mm-hmm. who I've sort of done idle, I guess, yeah, consulting with um, on on difficult cases and when they need you know, particular uh, information. Um, I think we've got had a bit, a little bit of a, you know, a working relationship here and there since I've uh, left my you know, oh, more nice. distinguished post. So, um, so yeah, and I thought you might have a negative feeling about the Order of Saint Bede. <laughs> yeah. um, just to let you know, you've maxed out your negativity towards the Order of Saint Bede. You've got a minus three, which is the kind of the strongest relationship. Yeah, I don't like to have. Uh, I think yeah, from all of you, there's like, yeah, no, <laughs> not, um, no. and a positive relationship with the P Division. Great. So you you know some of the local police, um, and they may call yeah. upon your services to to help in in cases particularly esoteric. Great, uh, Monsieur Matt. The Order of St. Pete. What a great bunch of laughs, eh? <laughs> eh? What a laugh. Um, I have quite a positive relationship with the uh, the Court of Holly in winter. Um, oh, yes. During the dark part of the year, that is when I am at my busiest because people don't like going out, see? Um, and uh, the, the Fae in the summer, they're all very... They're all very really dancing in sunlit glades, you know. They, they, there's not a lot of skullduggery and moving things around, which is really where I make my business. However, I'm afraid I have a rather poor relationship with P Division, since they obviously never dream of uh, something so foolish as launching a criminal investigation against a nest of vampires. But they could quite easily pull over just a humble delivery cyclist trying to make ends meet and ask him why he has 25 bags of A-positive blood in his <laughs> thermal bag. So, not a fan of them. I, I think uh, I've seen your name on some of their reports, actually, yeah. Yeah. Perhaps uh, you have, in the past, helped, yeah, kind of just, I'll just, no, he's definitely not him. I'll just cross him off this <laughs> list of most most wanted. Great. So, yes, uh, a positive relationship with the, the Holly court the, the the winter court which currently holds sway and holds the throne as you're in the final grass of winter when this game starts as spring is is about to turn so the holly court is a positive and a negative with p division um not unusual for a criminal particularly a criminal in the mystic arts um and, and dark dealings great so out of that session with your crew you've got your your you've got your grimoires and your occult library you've got a location where you can meet together you've got a a rough understanding of how that works networks of people you can draw on but you also know that you amongst you there is a passionate um, hatred almost of the order of saint bede uh, which may drive you to to work against them or to push forward your goal of of releasing the kind of knowledge to the to the wider world at the same time, there's some kind of um, loose connections there with the, the Holly Court. Um, P Division, depending on which member of the group you talk to, is either a positive or a, um, a negative. Um, and through your criminal connections and your mystical um, arts, a connection to the Mercurial Collegium. Great. Before we go on to our first scene for tonight, I just want to ask you to, to come up with one or two hooks, which is what are things that are happening in the town of Edinburgh 
and this is the end you know it's been a long dark cold winter the world itself has been gripped by a pandemic people have been shut away and doors that were normally open have been shut both in the fey worlds and and the ghostly realm people are only now just emerging to sort of back to the streets has been an NSA is a cold and dark winter um rainy and dreak what are some of the things else that happened what are possible hooks for you might investigate uh you know are there bodies turning up somewhere that have unusual marks are, are there um, street what of maybe just one or two hooks think that as a group or as a crew might perk your interest and in something you would like we all know we must beware beware the ides of march um which is a, a month or so past in our game timeline but nonetheless the reason one must beware it is because when the seasons change and one court is substituted for another, then all ongoing sort of rivalries and quarrels in the court must be quashed by the time of turning, uh, or it will be ill luck to those who go into the next season with unfinished business. So it's a very busy time that last month or so, where everyone is uh, both sending as many gifts as possible, but also anyone who wants a score settled. Uh, there's a lot of cursing and backstabbing that goes on. Uh, only this year, strangely, the Ides of March were rather quiet, and there's been a couple of long, you know, fairly significant feuds that don't seem to have been resolved, and there's only a few days to go. Oh, very nice. So, yes, unresolved feuds between the courts. Great. Anyone else have any hooks that might pique your interests something that might have come across p division's desk and been handed on to you or perhaps found in an old why you found uh, a letter or maybe a customer um lilith who's who's had some strange portents and has come to you asking favors lilith has been having some trouble with her zoom divination sessions of late um, not so much the customer's requests, but she's been getting a sense, like a really bad headache, of a big secret um, lurking just out of reach. And she doesn't feel like her, um, her divining skill is quite potent enough to figure out what that secret is, probably because it's limited to very few people. Um, but it's something to do with the Fae domains in Edinburgh. She can sense that, but she can't sense what it is. And it's giving her such a migraine. So something is brewing. Nice. There's a um, lot of uh, community worries in Dal Rai at the moment because one of these huge, great student housing complexes being thrown up by some some big property investment group, the Soldad Group or the, the Crown Group. No one's quite sure. All they know is that it's very, very tall. Uh, most of the work seems to be getting done at night and. Uh, yeah, there's tinted windows, and this thing blocks the sun. Uh, locals are concerned. Mm, okay, so unusual civic developments. Oh, what did you say the address is? Uh, I went with Dal Rye. Somewhere in Dal Rye, the outskirts yeah, of the town. I, I think someone's put in an order for, for an address in Dal Rye. Um, for mm. kind of, for, I think they're setting up maybe a community library or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think I've got the note somewhere. It's it's still a couple of months off, um, but it's quite a substantial kind of library they want set up. A light reading. And is this a potentially dangerous library, or just one that can kind of generally give people some information? Oh, it's just a general. Um, mm. Bit of bit of romance, bit of crime, literary fiction, classics, nice. that sort of. And nothing, nothing untowards as of yet. Okay, so that's good. So we've got some, yeah, some unusual building construction going on on the outskirts of the city. Um, orders coming in for libraries for probably the same set of buildings. We've got a, a strange portents and a tension in both your head and in the miasma and the, the ether surrounding your nations. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the sense of, of something something brewing, um, and the courts, unusually for this year, have not their disputes by the Ides of March. 
Okay, so in a moment, we're going to start our first scene. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to, to remind you guys, so it's supernatural themes. So there's kind of elements that can be not horrific, but there's sort of elements of darkness in the world. So just to remind you again, if you're feeling uncomfortable, I'm going to try and make most things veiled. Yeah, you can do your X or hold up your X. Um, I'm going to try and do most things veiled, but it is supernatural themes. And there are creatures that have kind of, you know, monstrous appearances or, or, or psychic and... Um, uh, emotional effects on you so I'm going to kind of describe that um, but I am not going to labor the point I'm not going to be gratuitous or bloodthirsty so I'm going to try and they're, they're, they're off the table for me uh, but if you'd like something to be more veiled just let me know um, and we can we can progress from there everyone feel comfortable and happy to, to do that yeah and again if you say sometimes this is easier than, than if you feel like bad interrupting just hold this up and I'll I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing we can rewind it and we can work the scene differently to, to, to suit that. So um, let's let's set some scenes. So as I said, uh, we're basing this in Edinburgh and it is the morning, 28th of April. Last night was a dreary, drizzly cold night. Um, and Craig, you were out on deliveries last night and unexpectedly a ha came in. So there's a deep, mist across uh, the city of Edinburgh and perhaps Abs might be able to put up a picture at this moment. You'll see that the lights uh, were diffused and you see the strange orange glow above the city as all the city lights were reflected back down into it and it makes walking the kind of winds and dark back streaks of Edinburgh all that more eerie because the sounds themselves are deafened, um, slick cobbles are, are treacherous underfoot. But most of you other than, say, Craig out doing deliveries, were able to sort of sleep through the night. But uh, Professor Fletcher, um, in the morning you get um, a, a missed call um, and, a, and a voice message left to you by one of your contacts um, in P Division, uh, a DCI charmer. And he's just he's just left a voice message. He says, um, curious case come up last night. We had a dog walker on um, Arthur's seat. Um Coming down the hill, um, somewhere between St. Anthony's Chapel and uh, St. Margaret's Well, um, stumbled, fell, seems to have had a possibly a stroke or some kind of medical emergency, and um, unfortunately, the chap has died. But um, the strange thing was, some witnesses, the first first um, responders, um, two, two young students, they, they said they, they heard the mist or saw something. Um, I haven't got their witness statements in front of me, so I can't go into details, but if that's something you could look into, mainly I'm concerned about this possibility of a stroke. I mean, given connections with, you know, our friends in the Fay Court, you know, historical precedents. Um, anyway, uh, just let me know. Maybe just drop me a text and uh, see if you can look into that for me. Uh, thank you. Okay, this is DCI Chalmers. Uh, okay, bye-bye. Yeah, so you're left with that voice message about... Um, an incident on Arthur's with a dog walker. Um, for Lilith, um, for you, um, in yeah, the morning of the 28th um, is fairly busy. There's lots of buzz in the air as you know, people are coming in, particularly um, those in the Beltane Society who are kind of working towards the festival on the city top. You know that Carlton Hill is going to be fire on the night of the 30th. And there is palpable tension in the air with uh, various people, but also um, those that you feel are maybe perhaps a little um, sort of in touch with the Fey world, sensing this in the sort of, you know, people coming in for divination charms just to help them through this time of change from winter to summer, when the, the world is going to, on the night of Beltane, going to turn on a dime when the, the May Queen will sacrifice the Green Man and perhaps not restart the world. So yeah, tensions are brewing and you can feel it palpably. And um, Garia, yeah, the, the bell in the, your doorway rings several times uh, in the shop during the day and you come downstairs to find, yeah, an unusual number because you've been on lockdown, there hasn't been as many foot now, there's one or two extra shop. And again, just reading up on sort of to know about ancient rights and what's going on in Edinburgh and, you know, what they could do. Um, but as I say, the most uh, uh, kind of pertinent thing is, Professor Fletcher, you have received a phone call. So if you want to use WhatsApp, your group, or I might suggest hex chat, which is written entirely in hexadecimal and also works well for incantations. <laughs> for all your hexing needs. For all your hexing needs, yeah. Um, yeah. So 
as a group of gr group, uh, I don't know if this is something you share with them, um, but certainly this would something that uh, you do some research with and, and have assistance with. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm certainly going to, I'm, I'm definitely, I think I, I usually, my first port call is usually Gario, I think, and, uh, you yeah, know, looking into, um, uh, you know, research topics and, and books that I might be able to get a, hand, a handle on. Um, but I think I'll drop him, uh, I'll drop DCI Chalmers, was it? Mm, DCI uh, Chalmers, yeah. I think I'll, uh, when I wake up, which I, I think would, you yeah, know, I'll be fitfully sleeping until uh, near, near lunchtime, I think, and then... Uh, um, drop him a, a, a text saying, uh, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look into it. Um, yeah, let me know when I can come by the station. Um, it'd be good to good to have a look at those, those statements." I'd enjoy what he said. Yeah, you you know DCI Chalmers from that trouble in Greenock, um, and that that he always refers to. Me. So you know he's yeah fairly solid mm -hmm. and past your cases past that have worked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, so you heading to to Garia's to to yeah. do some research or yeah, and and to get my morning coffee because my my flat is now so full of books. So I, I've pretty much got a bed, a bed, and books, um, and there's always tea and, and biscuits available at Garia. So as yeah, a loyal got a fancy, customer, got a fancy coffee machine in the in the shop. So you know, <sighs> wise can, wise investment. Wise man, can you please tell me where the shop is because I I want to go there. I want to have a good coffee and a read of a of a, an ant book uh, so yeah okay so if you're doing some general research on on what you've heard in this message between garia and uh fletcher are you, by the way are you letting the others in on this or just at the moment you're just doing a little bit of basic research to see what this might be about yeah i think i'll pop it on the i'll pop it on the group uh, the group chat but i think it, it'll be directed to garia but i think i'm popping it on and saying you know if, uh, if anyone's heard anything around uh, around our seat um especially i guess uh craig you know i, I I don't know if I know if he was out or not, but I'll probably ask if he was out, uh, you know, working, so to speak. Uh, I was indeed, and uh, I'll put a bit of a buzz around and see if anyone delivering the pot of calls has heard anything. Oh, great. Well, first off, can I get, um, can Garia and Fletcher make me a law check now, given you've got access to this great library, I'm going to give you a plus two to this. And it's, it's, you're looking at something that is a bit of information you've got so far is um, that there's a dog walker and there's something to do with a medical condition and the stroke and the, and the relationship possibly to something uh, odd going on. Um, so I'm just gonna say that's fairly easy to research. So it is going to be, um, an eight. So all you need to rule is 2d6 plus your law and you get plus two because you're using your library um, and the two of you are working on it together. So um, you can actually each roll for the like. Okay. Uh, right. So I got a nine plus my three, which is my law. My so two. Excellent. So is that 12 altogether? Uh, nine plus two. Yes. Excellent. Yep. So that's the, well and truly on the way to great success. And Cam, how did you go? I uh, I was uh, yeah, it's still morning for me really. I was I was pleased for the uh, the quantity of books. I, I rolled a four. Four. Uh, I, get, I, I get a um, you know a nine overall. <laughs> okay, I get up and make him a double espresso. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, with that, turn of the seasons always uh, always messes with my sleep. Good, yeah. Well, with the courses of, uh, of caffeine coursing through your veins, but also with, uh, yeah, with your eldritch tomes opened up above um, on your, your, your kind of living room table, you're poring over the various texts. And you can see why this might have um, spooked or perked P Division's uh, mind is you know that going back a long way, um, re researching that particularly the word stroke derived possibly from the words elf struck and that when people used to believe that when they'd find head arrows that they were actually invisible projectiles thrown by fey creatures strike a human paralyze them so that possibly that stroke in this case could be um, an attack um, by a fey on a mortal um so yeah then you know the yeah, from this our, our modern word stroke is actually derived from elf struck or the the, the striking of a of a, a flint head arrow onto a human invisibly to paralyze them um and uh craig you're out on the streets you're kind of looking what kind of things are you asking of your, your network of couriers 
Uh, so I'm playing it fairly casual, seeing, uh, doing the old like, oh, looking up from my phone. You heard this stuff about the the guy on Arthur's seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says he was, you know, just collapsed, found by some students. You guys hear anything? It'd been last night if you were up around Pollock Halls, like. Great. Uh, let me a streetwise check. Can you make me a streetwise check? Yes. Uh, now, because one of our group assets is this uh, ring of couriers, uh, would I get a benefit from that? I'm going to say, because it's a fairly general query, um, you, you, yeah, yeah, make me a roll, and you're, you, I'm going to say your your challenge rating is going to be 8 rather than sort of 10, but um, you've got your number. I, I get a 12 overall. Perfect. Now, don't forget, you can boost your... Um, your uh, roles by your will and if you want to and remember if you get five or more critical that's in your case you're four over at the moment if you wanted to you can push that i'm gonna play it cool for now it is early days yeah okay yeah so through your network you get a ping back um just after the late morning and one of the couriers was like oh yeah yeah no um uh, her name's elspeth and you you know quite well she's delivered she was delivering last night to pollock halls and she said she actually got a delivery to a, a ne the next door unit there was two girls who were being um escorted back by some police and she heard them and they were saying they'd just come off the hill and they had been witnesses to this um and she kind of on the sly yes yeah, like if you want to know just let me know and i'll, I'll point out wh where they where they live um, yeah. she said they've been fairly distressed and the police were trying to talk about atmospheric lensing or the the, the, the effects of the mist and the light and distortions um and she said yeah they're talking about weird stuff. I would love to know their details. Thank you, Elspeth. Great, that's passed on to you. So, yeah, in this sort of general chat, and uh, Lilith, you get these sort of pings later in the day as that the, the others have been out, um, and, yeah, this connection to um, possibly Elfstruck or, or a, a fey attack, um, and that there's, yeah, two, two students at Pollock Hall were, were witnesses to this. Um, and um, from from P, P Division, you do know that the, the, the dog walker died. He did not make it. Yeah, so I'm starting to wonder if this has something to do with these, these headaches I've been getting. Um, so I'm wondering if I can use my divination ability to see if I can find out a bit more about what happened on the hill last night. Okay, so with things in the past, it's hard to divine those things. You could maybe divine something going on now. Um, so you could to, to kind of get a clear idea div divination um, is about the present rather than the past or future. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering then if maybe I can use it to snoop in on what sort of P Division thinks about all of this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're trying to, yeah. And you think that's, mm, okay. So you know that P Division is fairly small in Edinburgh and in terms of active officers on the case, you might need to, to, to do a fairly deep divination to gain the knowledge that they have Specifically. Um, but generally, if you wanted to find out the chat about what's going on at the, the police station, you could define what the sort of local the local beat police uh, might know about what's going on. Yeah, I might do that then, because to be honest, I've already got a headache this morning and I don't want to push it. That is fine. OK, so for that level, you're gonna, it's challenge level of eight and you're going to use your law and you're going to spend two will. Okay, um, so I rolled a six plus my law is a nine, okay. and I have to spend two will as well. Is that two right? will, yep. So one thing I'll get you to do during this game is just track your will, because as I say, magic will be used, utilize that, but also magical attacks will affect your will. So yeah, using sort of concentrating, as you say, it's a nagging, pulsing headache. It's almost like one of those cluster migraines that's sort of visual kind of impressions on the mind. But through that, you can hear the clanking of cups and tea, and you can tell that you know you've, you've caught good time to, to kind of cast an augury, um, and that there's much kind of chat at the moment in the police station. And you can see maybe the, the brewing of tea and, and cups of coffee are being drunk. Um, by the changer of the staff um, and that you can you kind of get a sensation of a, a briefing that's happened that morning and that um, you get the name Stephen Freeman uh, is the, the the victim here um, you also get the names Tess and Anna and that you get a sensation that there's sort of joking going on that they were spooked by something and the, the kind of general laughter is that there's 
the impression that they got spooked in the in the mist by you know when when a light shines through a mist things seem so much bigger and that they were kind of crazy for thinking that this this huge thing was jumping through and they're saying they probably just slipped on their feet or maybe they'd been out drinking because they're students they might have been on a scavenger hunt you get the idea that the police are sort of deriding their story that they mm-hmm. saw something big in the mist um and it scared them mm-hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and, and pop what i saw in the whatsapp chat because i don't want this headache to have gone for nothing so i'll i'll pass it on to uh, to everyone and be like you know hey guys do you think this could be something better it's those monks could be those monks. It's always the monks. Hate those monks. No, 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 no. Let's not be rash. <laughs> it's early still. No, I think we should be rash. It's never too early to be rash. <laughs> Great. Well, for tonight's session, we have only five more minutes. So we kind of, is there anything you would like to do today before what we'll do is at the, in the after sort of this five minutes, we'll wrap up what you've done today to sort of start your investigations off. And next session, we'll start with, okay, the active and ongoing investigation into this event. But just to round out this session, is there anything each of you uh, or as a group would like to be doing um, to investigate this um, strange occurrence on Arthur's? Sounds like some manner of a business. So I am going to, I'm going to have a little uh, think about what I know about, or perhaps moot the idea that it's something to do with these. uh... And the thunder rumbles again. The night is indeed dark. The storm wraps around you and howls into years like a cacophony of spirits howling and gnashing. Uh, Back to you, sorry. Yeah, it does that. <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah. I presume you can edit all that out. Oh, what, no, we'll keep uh, that in. <laughs> oh, good, oh, good. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is focus on basically tracking down these two students. Uh, I feel the others are better placed to research what a giant fey creature might be, but I reckon I've got the best chance of tracking down these two. Elspeth's kind of told me where they are, so I will basically lurk outside there um waiting for people to come out and if i see two sort of nervous looking young student types coming out then i will just uh shout tess anna and if they oh yeah look up then i'll know it's them all right great um so we'll we'll leave off with a streetwise trick from you for sort of being able to sort of sort of find these two um students um what is everyone else doing well, I've got the shop to look after, so I can't just bugger off. Um, yeah. So I'm going to use my National Library of Scotland access to uh, do some research, see if this has happened before, look at some uh, Edinburgh Evening News, Scotsman articles, see if we've had some strange occurrences. And Great. Before. And what kind of skill do you think you'd like to use for that, if you have skill? Uh, Hmm. I mean, could I use my investigator? It's not quite... Yeah, investigation, yeah. Um, and you can use that. Um, investigation gives you that skill. You get a bonus to your skill for, for research. Um, and you can use that with um, education or perhaps with um, uh, even law itself. Awareness. Yeah, I've got law or I've got awareness. Yeah. Make, make me a law check. Um, We'll do for that. So you're you're researching that. Um, Camden and Lou, what are you doing for the rest of this day? Well, I think that uh, Reynolds is uh, at some point in the afternoon where he's feeling a bit uh, a bit more awake, had a little bit of uh, brunch. He's going to uh, brave the drizzle um, and head towards the, the police station to to chat to to Chalmers and get the uh, see if he can snoop in to the first. Uh, witness statements that he, he, he managed to get. Um, feeling uh, uh, like he's not, I don't think uh, I'm feeling particularly sociable, so uh, I didn't want to track down the two witnesses myself. But I feel like uh, me and Chalmers uh, have a bit more of a dynamic, so I can uh, yeah, grab another coffee on the way and uh, chat with him. Great. And Lou, what is Lilith's day? 
So I think Lilith is going to head over to Garia's, which seems to be our sort of like our, our headquarters. Um, because, you know, de definitely because she wants to help with this investigation and not because Garia has paracetamol and coffee, which are things that she really needs right now. Great. Yes. <laughs> So we've got the kind of gathering of the starting of the gathering of the crew. We've got Lilith going to Garia's. You've got um, uh, Fletcher who's sort of been at Garia's and then sort of heading off to the police station. And you've got Craig on the case uh, tracking down in person the two witnesses. So I think we'll leave it there. And next time we start, it will be um, first the, the, the end of this first scene. And we'll start the investigation proper into a green and pleasant land, and we'll find out uh, what has sparked this incident on Arthur's Seat or Ard Tor, the great hill in the centre of Edinburgh, uh, with its grassy flanks and its ancient tradition and uh, its volcanic history. Um, and we'll end it up there. But um, can I just say to all of you for being in session zero and for offering yourselves to trial uh, liminal and to be involved in this session? Um, Thank you very much. And uh, to the audience, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Please tune in for next time, which is session one. Um, and if any of you would like to say anything before we go, and that I'm going to start saying goodbye in a moment. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, thank you guys. so much. It's been yeah. fun. It was good. Good to meet you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, and if you want to all wave, and we can uh, st we can sign off and say goodbye to the, to. Uh, we'll see you later, and we'll see you for session one. Uh, um, you know, the game begins. The mystery is afoot.